Hey everyone, my name is Alexander Milosic. I'm a 3D artist currently working in a newly developed 3D art sourcing studio called Arcane Owl. Today I will be showing you how I created these assets, so this backpack for animals and parrot. Hope you learned something new, so let's get started. I started with modeling the parrot. At the very beginning, before I start the entire process, I like to have references. They can help me with the proportion and help me with the direction I should go with. When it comes to cartoonish, stylized art, the key is bigger proportions, so with the parrot, bigger eyes, bigger head. As this parrot and also backpack were commission work, I received references already from the client. But it doesn't matter if it's a personal project or commission work, references are key, at least for me. The one program I use to help me have all of my references together in one place is Pure Ref. It's a free program. It's a tool that allows you to put images on top of your screen, so I would highly recommend it. Regarding the parrot, I only had the species that was supposed to be made and received the image with different animals already made for the game in order to see what was the style of it. So this was the image board. As this is an organic model, for me it was easier to start the modeling in ZBrush. I started with basic primitives such as sphere for the body and cylinder for the claws. I could have started with the box, it doesn't matter. The only thing that's important is getting the right block out, which includes shapes and proportions of the model. I used brushes like Move Clay Buildup in ZBrush to get the basic shape. Also, the symmetry was on during the entire modeling, so that's shortcut X in ZBrush. I was still playing around with the proportions and shape of it, it was still messy modeling. As for the wings, I started with one feather, so just a simple cube, deformed, again moved with move brush, and also I had a subtle line in the middle using the inverted orb cracks brush. Then every feather was placed separately and then combined in one subtool. This will help me later on as I will be able to deform wings as a whole. One huge recommendation is also, if you don't have it, to download Orb's amazing brushes and also to buy and donate a bit for his amazing rendering tutorials and matcaps. I personally love his matcap. As you can see, I use them also during this project. I continue playing with the shape of the parrot. I decided it was way too chubby, so I made him longer a bit, again just with using simple brushes as move, standard and clay buildup. The beak, claws and wings are made as a separate subtool from the body, so I can manipulate them easier and because the beak was supposed to be able to open. As he still looked a bit scary and not cute enough, I played more with the proportion with move tool and ended up with this fellow. I was pretty much satisfied with his silhouette, he had a cutish look. In order to break the symmetry, I added three hair feather things. Then I activated store the morph target. Under morph target, then store empty. This stores the geometry's position in space. So we can, for example, change, move the geometry, add some alphas, and say we place three alphas, and we don't like one particular thing. We don't have to undo everything, but rather just choose more brush, that's shortcut BMO, and just delete the ones we don't like. One thing to note, if you store the, store the morph target and then you dynamesh the model or subdivide it and other similar options, you lose the previous saved morph target, so watch out for that. Okay, so as I said, I saved the morph target and started placing the feather alphas. Now, the alphas for the feathers fur were previously bought by an amazing artist called Jared Everson. Make sure you check them out. They're only $3.50, but they're really, really amazing. Now again, I activated the symmetry and started placing different alphas. When I placed something I didn't like, I used simply the morph brush and deleted it. Also, one cool thing you can do in ZBrush is you can create morph target layers. So under layers, you can create new layer, do the sculpting as before, so add alphas, move and stuff like that. When you don't like something, use the Morph brush and delete it. And once you're done, you can also play around with this layer and with the intensity of it. So, for example, if you find that alphas you placed on your parrot have the big intensity, you can just decrease them by using this layer. 
After some time, I ended up with this model and decided he was good to go. So Parrot, hi Polly, checked. Now for the backpack, I had a little bit of a different approach. I started modeling in Blender. For me, it was easier to start in Blender as I thought I would have more control than in ZBrush. Again, I started with basic primitives, so cubes and cylinders. I just added loops and started moving vertices. Everything stayed forward. I deleted half of the faces and activated the mirror modifier in order to speed up the process. For the backpack, I had a clear reference, so I just took to it. For every part of the backpack, I added also the subdivision modifier. I wasn't worried too much about poly count, as I would fix that in the later stages when creating the low poly and cleaning up the model for baking. So every single part of the model is just from basic primitives with added loops and move vertices. Now the stitch. From the front pocket, I selected an edge, duplicated it and separated it from the rest of the mesh. I played around a bit to get the right shape and deleted some vertices. Then I selected the edge and converted it into curve. So under object, convert to curve from mesh. Then I created a new curve. Again, I played around to get the right shape, moved it a bit and added bevel to it. Also, it is important that under fill mode, full is selected. I selected the first vertices from the previous curve and placed cursor to select it. I placed the pivot of the entire curve to be on the beginning. Then I selected the other curve and placed selection to cursor. This way their pivots align. I added the array modifier and curve modifier. From the drop down I selected the previously created curve. Now sometimes we'll have to scale the model or play with the values of the relative offset as it can stretch a model a bit. So the first concept art for the backpack was close to the model I made and I have shown you. When I sent the screenshots to my client, he made some great observations and gave some amazing tips for the backpack's improvement. The silhouette didn't read completely, also the backpack was too boxy. It didn't have that organic feel. So after a few alterations, I ended up with this model. So again, the changes weren't that big, as you can see. So for the general shape of the backpack, I just moved and scaled a few vertices. I moved the lower part of the backpack to go a bit down to get that feel that something heavy is in the backpack. The straps on the sides were also made to go to the sides to give that funkier silhouette. The upper part of the backpack was given more volume so it would look like that these straps are really holding it. As I said, don't be afraid to exaggerate a bit when it comes to cartoon stylized art. And the style of the straps was changed completely. So after changing the shape of the backpack, I applied all of my modifiers and exported this model to ZBrush. Now another cool tool I like to use when I'm exporting from Blender to ZBrush or the other way around, I use Gobi. It's a free Blender add-on and it allows you we just one click to export directly model from one program to another. Also, there is GoZ for exporting in the same vein models from Maya or 3D Max or similar to ZBrush. So I imported the model in ZBrush, subdivided the model a bit so I could add details and added the lines on the places where the material of the backpack would stretch. So like near the stitches and stuff like that. I added these lines just by using the inverted orb cracks brush. Also, by using a simple standard brush, I added this curve on the upper part of the backpack. And again, Orbs brush for editing these folds. And that was pretty much the end of the high poly of the backpack.